everyone. I'm Virginia. Hello, I'm Barbara. Welcome to the weekly mindset live stream, giving you the tools and knowledge to manage your mental health and well-being. Today's session, uh, we're going to give uh, give you some further skills to uh, manage our mental health during the times of uh, distressing emotions. And uh, the meat of our session will be led by our resident therapist, Daryl. Say hello to everyone, Daryl. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Mindset is put together by therapists, the staff at Body and Soul, and by people with lived experience of mental health. People uh, like us. So we know what works, and we've put together these tools and want to deliver them to you in a friendly and accessible way. So this week, uh, we are going to cover some more skills to, um, to help us deal with uh, distressing emotions. Uh, and Daryl's going to go into that. And um, while he does that, uh, Virginia is going to be live scribing, yay, to illustrate yay. what Daryl says. So yeah, over to you, Daryl. What have you got for us today? So what these skills are, these are, these are called distress tolerance skills. And they're not all of them, they're just, they're just some of them. And what we're looking to, to do is we're to, to use distress tolerance skills. We use these skills when, when you can't immediately change things or when, for example, you can't, can't sort out your feelings or your emotions, yeah? And because when we're really distressed, our problem solving abilities can get really, uh, can get blocked. And when that happens, um, uh, we, 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 we wanna let go of those problem solving abilities. So, so, you know, if you're 80 or 90 out of 100 distressed, it's very difficult to think straight and problem solve. So when that's not possible, right? This is what this is. These are the these are the types of things that you can do. And and actually, in honesty, uh, we're going to talk about what they call distracting skills. And everyone will have heard of distracting skills. Every lots of people will know that that, that 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 they can distract themselves. Human beings do it all the time. But the key to this bit for for you guys is that is that um is the timing, yeah. So people often think when they're highly distressed, they often think that it's not the time to do one of these tasks. Yeah, that, that, that actually they've got to dive in and they've got to solve something or something like that. So, so that's the message I want to I want to get. And just to elaborate the importance of um, dis, uh, distracting is that um, distracting is about moving the attention. Yeah. And what we and that's what we've been practicing for, for weeks, moving the attention back to a particular task. So lots of people will have been practicing this. Yeah. And the thing about uh, distracting, the benefits of distracting or why distracting is useful is because um, what we do is we move our attention and we fill our short term memory with thoughts or with other thoughts, images and sensations. And what this does is in turn, it changes our physiology. And when we change our physiology, we affect our associated responses. Yeah? So we change our physiology, the way we respond change slightly. And then when we're distressed, what they call emotional expressive behavior comes up, yeah? it influences that. So that's the sort of psychological rationale uh, for distracting. Yeah. And, and the reason I, that, 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 look, distracting is very, uh, very useful. And distracting is very different from um, avoiding something, yeah? When we avoid something and we're distressed, we often make it worse. So when we're distracting, what we're doing is we're really saying to ourselves, and this is where you start, I'm putting this aside for now, yeah? So you want to have a commitment to go back to solving the problem. So sometimes the problem will solve itself, sometimes it won't be there, and sometimes there's a clear problem to solve. So we're not putting it away forever, we're just putting it on. <clears throat> yep. As well as that, um, distracting skills are used in cancer treatments, they're used to help children cope before surgery and, 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 and stuff like that. So the first kind of distracting skill that people can do is, 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 is just activity based. And activity based can be anything from it's up to you. Um, activities don't have to be pleasant. Yeah? People often think, oh, well, I, you know, I can play, you know, um, you know, I play cards, I go for a walk, I get some fresh air. That's all fine. Play a sport, uh, call a friend, listening to music. All of these things are fine, but, but it doesn't have to be pleasant. You can, you know, 
if there's a cupboard that you need to sort out, if your room, you know, you can clean your room, you can clean the oven. Yeah. So there's lots and lots of different things that we can list. So if I was to list all the things of, of, of the top of my head, you, you know, you can listen to music, you can read magazines, you can do crossword puzzles, you can surf the internet, you can play computer games, you can go for a run. There's lots of different things. So we distract with activities. But we can also distract with, um, by contributing. And what contributing is, is, is about doing things for other people. And so if you think about how do you feel when you do something for someone else? Yeah, I feel really good. Sometimes what I do is I, I like I call a friend or I make a comment on a social media post that might help somebody and that works. Yes, yes. So if you give money to a homeless person, it benefits them, but it is still for you. You can still do that for you. And, and what you're doing when you're doing this is you're really refocusing your attention and you're giving you're giving meaning to an action that you're doing. And, and we un and we know that giving that we know that there is an importance to finding meaning when, when we're distressed. And I'll talk about it a little a, a little bit more later. So, you know, make a, you know, make, you know, take something round to a neighbor, uh, make something nice for someone else. Um, you know, I'm going to knit a jumper for Barbara, you know, <laughs> you know, what we're really after is refocusing and uh, recasting our own situation. Yeah. But that's a, that's another. So there's loads of things doing thoughtful things, buying someone card, writing a card, volunteering at home, let's go, whatever it is, family, friends, loads. And if you then start to think about it, right, there's, there's lots of categories of, 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 of contributing. That's one way. Um, another way we can do it is through our uh, through our brain waves, Right. So emotions are caused by brain, you know, are caused by brain waves. And, and, and we can affect our emotions with, um, with outside sources. So we can distract ourselves with different emotions. So this is, so for example, if you just split up with a loved one, right? And you start listening to country and Western music, yeah? my baby's gone, left me, they're never coming back, I'm gonna be alone forever, or something like that, you are likely to make your sadness intensify. So, and, and, and that's not going to solve the problem, is it? So, like I say, what you do, what you might do is listen to music to make sure it, that it creates a different emotion. So if someone, if you split up with someone, you want to probably go more like for something like, I will survive, I can get through this, something more upbeat. Um, but there are loads of ways of change, changing emotions. You can, you can watch TV shows that make you emotional. You could watch horror movies. Horror movies would change the emotion. If you're feeling sad, then change it to a horror movie and, and scare yourself. You can surf the internet for funny stories. You can watch your favorite comedy. You know, watching a comedy that you love and have watched again and again, what it does is it is that it actually interrupts the cycle. It actually interrupts the cycle of distress. And you can see this very clearly in, in brain scans of people that are, are distressed, that when they... Um, you know, when they, you know, for example, if they're really angry and they put on soothing music, it has an effect on not only their brain, it has an effect on the, 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 the chemicals that course through their body, uh, adrenaline, cortisol, oxytocin, all of these get affected by, um, by these distinct efforts to, to, to create um, different emotions. So people can do stuff like that. Moving on we have other kinds of distractions, which are like pushing things away, yeah? So um, pushing things away, again, back to the point of awareness, what we can do is we can put our problems or our uh, issues aside for a while, yeah? They'll, 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 still, they'll still be there coming back. So this is what they call either pushing away or a, or, or a vacation. And, and, and what you might do is you might just de deny the problem for a time. You might say, you know what? I'm not going to think about this today. Yeah, I'm going to put the pain on a shelf and box it up and put it away. Yeah, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to build an imaginary wall between, between myself and a situation or, uh, you know, so, yeah. So an extension of this idea is what they call a, a mental vacation. 
And you can do all the things that you might do on a vacation. So when we're on holiday, what do we do? First of all, it's unlikely that um, any of you have woken up on a Wednesday morning and, and been on the beach in Spain by the afternoon. Not many people do that. Most people plan their holidays in advance. So when you're taking a mental vacation, what you do is you plan it. You think, you know what, in an hour's time, I'm going to, you know, in an hour's time or in half an hour's time, I'm going to leave this I'm gonna, or, or I'm going to just, I'm going to just push this away now. Okay? Um, and then thinking about all the things that you might do on a holiday. So Barbara, what are the kind of things that you like to do on a holiday? Yeah, I like to go swimming. I like to, I like to read. I like to walk around and like explore new things, you know, like new parts of the, the town or wherever I am. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you could do those things. You could say, you know what, I'm putting this aside and I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a different part of town and I'm going to walk around it and look for a while. You know, I'm going to read a book because I only read certain novels when I'm on holiday. Or you might, um, you know, you might go and lay in the park, you might sunbathe. You know. Yeah, the sun's a good one because like that that one, that one, um, like that happened yesterday. I was just like, okay, I need to just take five minutes and go and sit in the sun. And even though it was just like five minutes, it just made a huge difference. It was like a really quick mental vacation, but it was enough to calm things down. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's all of these things, you know, eat, you know, eat some food from the country that you're, you know, you're thinking of. Send someone a postcard, you know, send Barbara or Virginia a postcard. Look, I'm having a break from myself. I'm having a break from my life. I'm having a break from my problem right now. You know, the weather's nice. Come and join me. Yeah. So just set that up um, in your mind, in, in your mind. Yeah. And there's lots of different ways, you know, you know, lots of different ways that people do that. So that's called kind of like either there's two concepts here. One is pushing it away and pushing away is the immediate I'm gone. Yeah. And then there's the vac vacation bit, which is just which is much more planned. And the vacation bit, is the vacation bit is something that I would do. I would, you know, for about I think it was probably about for about four or five years. I just didn't answer the phone on a Sunday. And lots of people calling me and I thought, you know what, Sundays, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to do it. It's almost like I had a vacation every, every week. The other way to do it is to, is, to, is to overwhelm your thoughts with other thoughts. And the way that people can do this, right, so, you're, so it's almost like a system of you've got thoughts, you're pushing ones out and you're replacing them with other ones. Yeah? And this requires sort of technical thinking. So this can be doing things that are this can be doing things that are difficult. Uh, maybe you you know sometimes people can do puzzles. Um, you could um, uh, you know try to remember all the songs you know all, all the all the words of a song in your mind. You could um, you could try and you could practice the alphabet backwards. You know you could you, you, so what you do is really dominate your uh, senses with with something else it's very difficult to think about anything else when you're when you're trying to do a complex thought-based task so other other variations on this right is that count stuff if you if you're walking along if you're walking along the street you might decide to count every yellow car or every black car or you might um you know you might think of a word and look at all the advertising hoardings and think, you know, you might look at advertising hoardings and see if you can go through the alphabet. There's an A, there's a B, there's a C, look around that. You might do that on road names or buildings. Yeah. And then the other option is, is a, or another option for distracting yourself is actually to change, is to distract yourself with other sensations. Yeah. And when you talk about other sensations, you're talking about touch, taste, feel, heat, you know this 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 kind of this kind of stuff so for example you're very uh, you know you feel very hot go roll in the snow or you know you, you you know you feel very cold then warm yourself up um just other sensations that come that come around your body rubbing your hands together um you know smelling things but you know boiling things overwhelming your senses uh, overwhelming your senses with um smells um sounds this kind this kinds of stuff so what i'm hoping is that people can see 
that there are um, multitudes of things that they can do and that really it's, it's, it's the timing of doing them. So I'm hoping today what you get from it is that, you know what, I can let go of this, you know, I can let go of this problem at the minute just for now. That's the, really the, the, the key to it, because it doesn't really matter too much what you do as long as you capture your um, attention. So, so the other thing that we can do is we can, and this is called an improved equation, we can, we can try to change our responses in, by, by interrupting out, by changing our environment somewhat. Yeah? And so we can replace what they call immediate negative events um, with, other, with other things that, again, change change our responses so the first one i was going to do is is, is 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 imagery yeah it's to talk about imagery and the usefulness of, of imagery and 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 what imagery can do is um it can boost our courage it can soothe us it can distract us it can give us confidence so if you think about um you know if you think about something like uh, flashbacks yeah so flashbacks are really traumatic re-experience of any events by people. Yeah. And what they do is, is, is that they move them, you know, they start thinking about a, a trauma or something difficult, really difficult that happened in their life. They can see it. Sometimes they can taste it. Sometimes they can feel this really uh, visceral response. And, it's re and, and flashbacks are really unpleasant for people. Um, but what, 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 what it also tells us yeah, because it creates those, but it also tells us that this can be done in another way. That actually, when we practice it, um, we can create other things with our imagery, just as powerful as flashbacks. So, for example, we can, you know, we can practice, you know, we can imagine very relaxing scenes. We can imagine being able to protect ourselves. We can imagine things going well. We can um, we can imagine pain or hurtful emotions draining out of us. Um, we can remember happy times. So vision really does produce the same effect um, as doing it. You can imagine something new. You can create a beach in your mind, or you can go back to a particular time in 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 your life when things were different. You know, you can imagine a job interview going really well. You can imagine a night out with your friends where. You know, maybe you weren't feeling you weren't feeling anxious. You know, for me, one of the things that I cling on to often is, uh, you know, is you know when I played a lot of sport. You know, if, if I did a great shot or I did a you know or I did a particular move in a sport that I was really pleased and scored a great goal or something like that, I'll replay that over and over in in, in my head. And sometimes, you know, so scoring a get a great goal probably takes a second to kick a ball in a goal. But sometimes I relive some of those goals and, 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 and it's not a second. I relive it again and again. Some things I've done, I relive like three or four times a day. And, 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 even, and, even, and so just imagine going through, just imagine that again. Yeah, because we spend a lot of time ruminating and going over um, things that we've done wrong. Or, or I have a collection of, on, my, on my phone. I collect things like images that I really like or you know short video clips that make me laugh with you know cats and stuff and so I have a collection so that in those times I can just bring it up and look at stuff because yeah. yeah. some people have trouble imagining right yeah but there's other ways there's other ways of coping with distress as well um um you know there's an expression that, that that's used a lot which is called lemonade out of lemons and you know and the story goes that you know you you know, you, you you get home and there's nothing. You know, there's nothing in the there's nothing in the fridge. It's a hot day, and you open the fridge, and the only thing in there is a is a couple of wilted lemons, and um, you know, and so what you do is you decide to make lemonade out of it. Yeah. So you find you try to find a meaning, or you try to find something useful in stuff, and so this is not about existence. This is not about finding out what the world means to you or anything like this. This is about sometimes, sometimes distressing things happen. Uh, sometimes painful things happen to show us something, to teach us something or to learn. Or sometimes things happen in our lives that without those things happening, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't be where we are now. So there's a guy called Viktor Frankl and he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. 
and th 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 this man spent years in the, the concentration camp and um and he ended up being quite grateful for that experience because it taught him so much it taught him so much stuff yeah and sometimes we, we and, and sometimes this happens to us you know i um i can in my in my own life i can remember um uh, getting fired from a job that i had and i loved this job and um but, but 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 getting fired for that made me change careers and if i hadn't changed careers at that point in my life um, I would have kept on working in that original job, which I wasn't that happy about. So sometimes, but I was distressed when I got fired because I needed the money. So sometimes things happen to us in a certain time, but it creates other opportunities in others. You know, pain is giving us, a, is a signal. Pain is often a signal that something's up and, yeah. that, you know, and, and, and that we've got a problem to solve. Yeah. So using pain as a signal. Suffering is different suffering is doing the same painful things again and again and not learning and not learning from it yeah doing the same thing and you know expecting a different result it's it's like a bit not very effective let's say yeah yeah okay so there's lots of, so so basically finding purpose finding purpose in meaningful situations um you know uh, for any of you out there that are um religious there's you know you can use prayer you can, um, you know, people, you can turn things over to a higher power. I'm sure, I can't remember, I'm sure some people believe in crystals or a super yeah. being. Um, Camelia, Camelia asks, um, when, is, when is it, um, when is a good time to use improve? As soon as you are distressed or even when you're not? I would say both. I would say both. You, you, you know, so one, one, one's about when timing, when you're distressed, definitely. But 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 these things these things help prevent us getting distressed in the first place. So, so so most people, you know, most people that don't really get super super distressed, they're doing things like this as a matter of course. Yeah, the the difference is one is distress tolerance and the other one is emotion regulation. So Camellia, as much as you you know, as much as you can, override the urges to not do it or think if you don't deserve it or something like that. So yeah, the cool thing is they do start to become automatic, even if we haven't been doing them like as a matter of course, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So think of it like so. Just thinking about prayer, right? What what are people asking for when they um when 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 they pray or open themselves up? They're very often they're not really thinking why me, why me. So what 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 helps more is really accepting that this is a difficult moment. Prayers are not designed to take a crisis away. Prayers were designed to help people cope yeah so sometimes you can do you know and sometimes you can do that you can you know you can you can use sayings religious sayings you can you know things like you know this too shall pass i felt like this before i've been distressed before and it goes away an anonymous attendee says how can i distract myself when i feel distressed when studying you can take a break you can take a break from the studying and you can do um, a mindfulness exercise you can um you know i mean you probably notice that if that, that when you do the mindfulness exercise you feel a little bit more concentrated you know? yeah that's what i find like if, if i'm in the middle of like working or something because it sounds like this person wants to keep studying right and then sometimes we don't want to take the time to do something but if i do a quick like paired muscle relaxation or if i spend five minutes doing mindfulness stuff i find that i actually gain more time because i'm so much less distressed and then i can actually study better or work better or whatever yeah actually there's loads and loads and loads and loads of studies if you look at really successful blue chip companies and stuff like that what they say is work 40 minutes you know or work you know for, work 40 minutes take a take a 10 15 minute break or even a 20 minute break, and then go back again and in nearly all of the studies where people did this they were much more productive overall right everyone so thank you for that daryl so uh you know what you uh, need to practice everyone if you choose to practice we do know that to get the maximum benefit from these tools uh it is really really important to to practice them because they're designed for use uh every day so we've got two instagram accounts one is at body and soul charity and the other one is at share the mindset uh in both instagram accounts you can find out about all of the mindset events that are happening throughout the week so yeah. please give us a follow and yeah. Yeah, you can revisit uh, previous 
um, mindset live streams as well as the mindset yeah. workout mind hack videos and if you have any um, burning questions you can also email us uh, at mindset at body and soul yeah absolutely yes and yeah reminder that mindset is not designed for crisis support so if you are struggling right now and you can't keep yourself safe please go to your a and e department or if you're at university go to your um well-being and mental health support services absolutely and yes. you can also call samaritans at 116123 yeah. thank you so much for tuning in everybody today mm -hmm. we will see you again next week and in the yeah. meantime keep, keep working, working on your mindset, mindset. bye everyone bye.